In this episode, we discuss why eyeglasses, contacts, and LASIK are bad for your eyes. We talk about what eye doctors aren't telling you, and we discuss eye exercises which anybody can use to get perfect eyesight at any age. Welcome to Anti-Aging Hacks. On this podcast, I interview top experts in anti-aging and longevity, and we discuss the best natural and medical solutions to bring you practical advice you can apply right now to fight back against aging. We also discuss sneak peeks at some huge scientific advancements coming in the near future that will allow us to age backwards. I am your host, Faraz Khan. Thank you for spending some time with me today. Our guest today is Carlos Moreno. Carlos has been a Bates Method Natural Improvement Vision Instructor since 1997. He has a vision consulting business called Centered Vision in the Center for Wellness in Montebello, California. Carlos teaches people how to see clearly without glasses, contacts, or surgery. He himself wore glasses and contacts for over 22 years, and with instruction and practice from the Bates Method, he corrected his own imperfect vision. Today, he will explain to us how it's all done. Carlos, thank you for being on the show. Happy to be here for us. So you wore glasses and contacts for 22 years, and today you don't. Tell us what happened. I had started wearing glasses uh, as I uh, went, transitioned from uh, grade school into high school, which is a pretty uh, normal age at which uh, nearsightedness happens. Wore glasses for a long period of time, never liked them. Uh, I was always uh, an athlete and just hated uh, glasses. Contacts were still something that uh, seemed too unusual. Uh, at that time, hard lenses, hard contact lenses were more common. And I knew of people who would lose them if they were swimming, they would pop out of their eyes if they were playing a sport, that kind of thing. Then uh, eventually the soft contacts came onto the market. And at some point I started using the soft contacts. It was it was a while before they could actually find, uh, they can get uh, contact lenses that corrected both uh, my nearsightedness, the myopia, and uh, the astigmatism that I had. One morning, I woke up and um, my eyes were sealed shut. I couldn't open my eyelids. I made my way over to the bathroom, to the sink, and got some saline, just kind of squirted it over my eyes, and little bit by little massaged the, the, the saline in, into my eyes and everything. Finally, my eyelids opened, and there was no white in my eyes. It was uh, wherever there was white, it was just completely red. So it, it looked like a monster. Wow. Uh, so that, that kind of spooked me and, uh, and then uh, continued wetting my eyes with the saline and then was able to get the contacts out. But that really made me think that, that the contacts were probably not a good solution. So I stopped using the contact lenses. And then somewhere along the line, I saw in some magazine or something, something about doing eye exercises. Reading that magazine article uh, made me think that there was people out there in the world that probably knew how to correct the vision naturally. Uh, so I started asking friends about it. And then a few months later, a friend told me about um, the, the book by uh, Dr. Bates, the abridged version of Dr. Bates's book. And so I got it from the library and I read it and did not understand it. He talks about relaxation in there and he, he talks about a lot of the uh, his techniques. Reading the book did not help me at all with my vision. However, with some understanding now of Bates that it existed, uh, some months later, within two or three months after that, I, I found uh, a Bates teacher. And in my second class, my vision just popped up very dramatically. Two thoughts went through my head. Wow, this really works. And secondly, that not enough people know about this. I have to learn how to teach this to people so that I could help more people so that more people can find out about it. You know, I had worn glasses and contact lenses for over 22 years. One of the the big precepts from Bates is to to reduce a person's prescription or or to get rid of the glasses as soon as possible. Um, Bates would have people, you know, just throw away their glasses. Not everybody could do that, but I was able to uh, stop using my glasses completely after three months and I uh, haven't used them since. That's fascinating. So once your vision improved, you could get rid of your eyeglasses in three months. You decided to become an eye coach? Right away from the beginning, a couple of the techniques I started teaching to other people because uh, it felt so much better. Bates, he discovered you know, that he, he paid attention to what was happening to people. He saw that when people relaxed, that their vision improved, that the vision fluctuated. 
and vision fluctuates with everybody. And, and, but that it feels good when you're at ease looking. Uh, it's a big relief to the body, to the eyes, to the mind. And so I, I started uh, telling friends and family about it right away, uh, some of the techniques that worked for me. Okay. Let's define some terms for our listeners. Nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism. What are these? Nearsightedness and farsightedness are two uh, colloquial terms, the, the terms that most people use out on the street. Uh, nearsightedness means that your near vision is good. So your nearsighted means your vision is good for close up in general, and that the vision for the distance is not good. So this is typically what happens with people when they start using glasses to see, you know, roadway signs or to see the, the board in the classroom or, or uh, when they're in college or in high school, that they all of a sudden start noticing that they can't read what's on the board. That's nearsightedness. Farsightedness is the, um, the thing that's usually referred to as presbyopia. Typically happens as people get older. Uh, it doesn't happen all at once. It doesn't happen to everybody. Um, but where the, the a person starts talking about using readers or re using reading glasses, that they'll, people will typically tell me uh, that their vision is good, but they use glasses to read. So that's what we're talking about with uh, farsightedness. Astigmatism, so uh, an eyeball shape, if you think of it kind of like a, a, a round balloon, like a ball, if you press, if you were to press on the ball unequally from different sides, the, the sphere would not be perfectly round. And that's kind of what happens with astigmatism, that, that there's different, uh, the, sh the, the shape of the eyeball uh, isn't the same in all all the way around, and so that that affects the vision. So that people uh, people's vision is they might see multiple images, they might see uh, all, all kinds of different uh, effects visually. But yeah, astigmatism is is also something that can be corrected by using Bates techniques. Gotcha. Well, thank you for defining those terms. I told you part of the story last week when I was over at your office, and I want to share this with the audience. About eight months ago, I believe. I was staring at my computer screen for 12 hours a day, and I still do that now, but my vision seemed blurry to me, so I decided to go see an eye doctor, and I did my research between an optometrist and an ophthalmologist, and I decided that I was going to go see an ophthalmologist since their training is more rigorous. When I got to the clinic, the doctor put the solution in my eye, and I couldn't see anything close for a few hours, and then I spent 20 minutes the doctor spent 20 minutes shining lights and looking into my eyes. We also did the standard eye exam, and then she told me that my vision was better than 2020, which was great. At this point, I was satisfied. And then she surprised me with her next question. She asked, how old are you? I said, I am about to turn 38. Why do you ask? And she said, just wait till 40, and you're going to get glasses. I said, but my eyes are 2020 or better. How could I get glasses in two years or more. I asked, is there anything I can do to stop that? And she said, nope. She sees it all the time and everybody gets glasses at 40. I just remember walking away from that conversation both confused and angry. And I was determined to find a way to hack my vision and keep it at 2020 or better. The whole point of that story is to ask you a question. Through these exercises with the Bates method, Anyone at any age can get perfect vision and not need eyeglasses, contacts, or LASIK. Why don't more people know about this? The reason why more people don't know about Bates, medical establishment uh, is geared towards dealing with disease, with problems. And they're used, typically working to help a person get by with the disability or try to clear up the disability. The way imperfect eyesight is normally treated is with glasses. That's that's what optometrists do. If you go to an optometrist, they're going to put eyeglasses on you. That's their solution. Eyeglasses don't fix the problem. They actually make it worse, as do contacts. Within regular medicine, they're, they're not treating the underlying problem. They're, they're not wor working with the person on the actual mental strain that is behind eye strain, that is behind imperfect eyesight. They're not taught that. Uh, even though Dr. Bates was a, a surgeon, he was, he was an ophthalmologist, he was a, a trained MD. Even though he taught other MDs how to do this, he taught other eye care specialists, opticians, opt optometrists, ophthalmologists, uh, MDs. Uh, he taught a whole bunch of different people 
And you're right. It must be that they're not being taught this because I love the medical community, but they stick so rigorously with what they're taught in school that it's very hard to break any patterns or paradigms that they have. Anyway, so let's talk about what is wrong with eyeglasses or contact lenses in your opinion. Glasses, contact lenses are a quick fix. You know, you, you go in and even within a day, you can get a pair of glasses or a pair of contact lenses uh, uh, fitted and you can walk out of the place with seeing with uh, seeing clearly. But the glasses, the contacts do not fix the problem. If you take the glasses or the contacts off, the handicap is still there. The disability is still there. Glasses and contacts don't fix the disability. They allow you to, to function with it. Additionally. They, they make your vision worse. So the, as uh, Dr. Bates writes about that in his book, uh, he has a, a chapter titled, you know, what glasses do to us. Uh, contact lenses didn't exist in his day, um, but they're, they're lenses that are correcting the vision. And as soon as you start using any lenses, your vision drops off because you're teaching your body to adapt to the lens so that the, all the time that you're using the lens, your eyes have to go into the shape and the glasses confirm the body in the wrong habit. So it would be like if you if you twisted your ankle and you started using a crutch and you continue to use a crutch for the rest of your life, your your ankle would never heal. You would never properly use your ankle and, and you could have even worse problems with, with uh, your posture, with your gait, with you know everything and you wouldn't walk as well. If you're always, you know, you wouldn't be doing the same kind of uh, mobility with your body if you twisted an ankle and always used a crutch. Glasses are a crutch, but when you start using glasses, and Bates writes about this, that if a person puts on glasses that correct their vision to 20-20, let's say, uh, and they wear them for a week, when they take off the glasses the next time, if they u- remove, stop using the glasses for a day uh, after using them for a week, their vision d- is not going to be what it was before they started using glasses, it's actually going to be much worse. And this was a common, well-known uh, experience that people had that as soon as they start using glasses, their vision gets worse. And then you just have to increase the prescription as you go. You get used to wearing the glasses the whole time. And then if you experience any any greater strain, you get a, get a stronger prescription. And instead, what I do is is I have people Either go without glasses if they can do that from the beginning. It depends on how strong their prescription is and uh, what their life is like. You know, if they're able to do do their work without glasses, and um, or uh, weaning a person off of their their use of glasses or contact lenses, getting a weaker and weaker prescription until you're stepping out to to not doing and using any any correction at all. But yeah, glasses make your your vision worse and you become dependent on them. That's that's a big that's the huge problem with them. Yeah, that was something I learned that was very interesting from you last week. And I think you alluded to this, right? The the vision that we have changes day to day, even within the day. And so if you go to the doctor and you're stressed and they measure your vision and you get a number, well, now you're stuck with those glasses and that number and it keeps going worse from there, Yeah, unfortunately. Everybody, this, this is an incredible thing that Dr. Bates noticed is that everyone's vision fluctuates. Even if you mentioned that your your vision came up as 2020, people who have even better than 2020 eyesight, let's say 2015 or 2010 vision, their vision fluctuates. Okay. So every, Dr. Bates recognized that everyone's vision fluctuates. In his book, he talks about how he could have people, uh, he, he could check with a retinoscope to see uh, whether a person had normal eyesight or not. Even people with cataracts, glaucoma, different kinds of eye diseases, if they were looking at a blank surface and they weren't making any kind of effort to see, their vision would fluctuate towards normal. And and, and he could see this with the retinoscope. And then if they looked at letters, then their vision would go to the imperfect eyesight that they were used to experiencing. But he, he saw that if a person had better than normal eyesight or whether they had really imperfect eyesight and other kinds of problems, that everybody's vision fluctuated. So if, you, if your vision is 20-20 and, you, and it fluctuates so that one day you notice that your vision is a little bit worse, if you end up going into a testing situation that is unusual, you're working with a stranger, they're testing you in a dark room, they're, they're uh, you know, in time we're put into a testing situation, most people stress in there. And when the strain goes up, the vision drops. And so it's not going to be unusual to be t- have your vision tested 
and have your vision come up as imperfect. Yeah, it's like sitting down for an exam yeah. in your college, right? When you have the exam paper in front of you, you immediately go into stress mode. And having those letters, you know, 20 feet away from you, you just want to prove to the teacher, or in this case, the doctor, that your vision's okay. So now you're squinting, and you're trying really hard, and it unfortunately makes matters even worse. Yeah, as soon as you start squinting, uh, and Dr. Bates is, is explicit about how making any effort to see clearly, uh, any effort to try to clear things up is doing the wrong thing, but it's what people automatically kind of do, that they'll stare, that they squint, that they make an effort to see something that they could see before and now that they can see or that they think they should be seen. And as soon as a person starts doing that, they're getting into the wrong habits. They actually are affecting their vision negatively and making it worse until their squinting isn't enough, until making an effort isn't enough, and then they got to start using glasses. And then they just, the whole that whole process is one of heading down the wrong path. Let me ask you, what is wrong with LASIK surgery, in your opinion? <laughs> there's there's uh, a lot of problems with LASIK. Um, right now, luckily, most people have access to the Internet. I, I highly recommend that people go on to – there's a website uh, titled LASIKdisaster.com. You know, the, the, the title kind of gives you an idea, but um, – they they do uh, kind of like sixty minute interviews. Uh, there's there's people who have done hidden camera interviews going in to talk to doctors, uh, asking them if there's any problems with LASIK. And depending on the doctor, you know, some of them will will be honest and and say, you know, even if you do the LASIK surgery for improving your nearsightedness, your your distance vision, that it, they'll tell you that you know at some point, you know, as you get older, that you might need reading glasses for close-up along the lines of what you experienced when you went in for your checkup. So even if they do LASIK, that the vision is still going to have problems for reading. Uh, now they've started doing uh, surgeries both for distance and for close-up. But anytime that you're doing the surgery, all you're doing essentially is changing the lens of the eye into a prescription. Okay? So... With glasses and contacts, people already have the experience that their vi that their vision can change and that their prescription can change. Okay, so if you put up, if you change the prescription of the actual lens in your eye, what's going to happen when you need to change that prescription? Okay, so it's not a permanent fix. Also, they're never fixing the underlying problem, which is the mental strain. I've worked with many people over the years that have had LASIK surgery. And, um, you know, whether it's one month or a year or 10 years afterwards and their vision drops off, they're aware that it wasn't a lasting solution. And then they come to me and then their vision kicks up naturally where, where I work with them and teach them the correct habits of normal eyesight, uh, teach them some of the Bates techniques and that the, the vision can get better. And then not only does their vision get better for the distance, but um, there, I also teach them how to improve their eyesight for close-up so that they never have to wear reading glasses either. Okay. Uh, so help us understand how Bates' theory differs from the standard vision theory. Yeah, the, the incredible thing with Bates is, so he was a, a, an extraordinary scientist. Uh, he's the guy who discovered adrenaline, the, the secretion of the suprarenal gland, as he called it. Um, he, he did the very first uh, radial keratotomy in 1898. Radial keratotomy is, is basically what, what has become LASIK. Now they use lasers for it. He did that in 1898. He stopped doing the, the, the surgery to improve the vision for the distance because he saw that uh, even though he had changed the shape of the lens uh, in the eye, um, that the, the vision could drop off afterwards. He started looking for case studies where there had been improvements or, or uh, remissions of different kinds of eye problems with cataracts, glaucoma, nearsightedness, farsightedness. And there was all kinds of stuff in the literature. There were many, many stories in, in the medical literature of these kind of things clearing up and doctors not knowing why it had cleared up, but they were documenting that it had happened. And this was contrary to the existing theory that once the vision goes bad, it stays bad and gets worse. He realized that the, there was all kinds of problems with the Hemholtz theory of how the vision works. Where And, and to this day, uh, if you go to optometrists and ophthalmologists, they mostly talk about uh, two features of, of how the eye works, that 
Um, if a person, as they're getting older, if their vision drops off, they'll say that the lens is hardening and there's problems with the ciliary muscle, that the, the muscle is getting weak. That's the one that stretches out the lens or relaxes so the lens gets thicker in front of the eye. This is the natural part of the eye that we refer to as the lens. And, and that that's the standard theory, that there's problems with that. Um, when a person is nearsighted, they'll say that the person was born with uh, eyes that are elongated, that the eyes are too long to see clearly in the distance. Dr. Bates tested with many kinds of animals. He also did surgeries as, as, a, as a surgeon on the eye, and he realized that it was the extrinsic muscles. There's muscles around the eye that we normally think of as they're the ones that turn our eyes left, right, up, and down, um, that those are the muscles that actually change the shape of the length of the eye, and that that is actually how the eye is focused. So he, he, he uh, published in, in medical papers and in his book, his original book, not, not the one that most people see today on Amazon, um, um, but his original book uh, covers all these experiments that he did where he showed that it's actually the extrinsic muscles that affect the shape of the eye. And that's what causes either nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism, or any of the other problems, other, other problems with imperfect eyesight. When a person is relaxed, um, those mu muscles function properly and the vision is normal. And uh, so most of the Bates techniques are, as, as he writes in many places, he, he says that all uh, errors of refraction are cured by getting the person to relax. In other places, he uses the word rest. Um, and and that's, that's a funny thing. As, as you mentioned, you had heard me talk about that before, but it wasn't until you experienced what uh, the relaxation was that, that you understood what, what I meant by that. Yeah, it's it's really hard to understand. You go, Doc, what do you mean? Or sorry, Carlos, what do you mean by relax? I, I'm relaxed. Like you, you mean your my eyes are going to get permanently better just by relaxing my muscles and not squinting so hard. And you had to show it to me. And we did a couple of, I believe that one was shifting. And then the other exercise you had me look at was not just focus in the middle of a letter, but to focus on the corners of the letter and to keep your eyes moving around. So that was really fascinating. Right. And part, what I was when I was it wasn't so much that I was having you focus on the corners of the letters. Uh, I was just bringing your attention to details of a letter and that your attention was moving over the details instead of trying to see all of a letter or all of a word all at once, that your attention moves over features of any object that you look at. So in all imperfect eyesight uh, 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 has staring as the common denominator. Everybody with imperfect eyesight is staring to some degree. The harder they stare, the more they work at fixing their vision, the worse their vision is. Um, when a person relaxes, the vision very, very casually and easily moves over details of any object that we're looking at. When we stare, when we make an effort to clear things up, we usually fo fix and focus and concentrate we, we stop that natural movement of the attention over objects, and that makes the vision worse. So what I had you do was just being aware of the different features on the corners of the letters. And by doing that, your, your attention began moving over those details. And um, do you remember what it felt like when, when, you stopped, when you started doing the shifting? Yeah. So let me explain that to audience. When I was focusing or squinting on some of these small letters, it was as if I was trying to burn a hole <laughs> in the paper with my eyes as You're laser. You were trying really I, hard, yeah. I was trying really, really hard, and I couldn't get the letter. And then we did one of the exercises that we'll, we'll look at in a few minutes. I did that, and then the other exercise was just focusing and not focusing, but moving my eyes around, and it made reading some of those words so much easier. And I didn't have to close my eyes after four seconds because my muscles were strained. It just seems so much natural and so much smoother. Yeah, and and that's the whole idea be, behind relaxing. Um, if you and and you know if if you see somebody walking down the street and their their shoulders are hunched up and it's a warm day, you you have an idea that the person's under some level of tension, and that tension, the the cause of the tension is mental. This is one of the incredible things that that Bates talks about that our vision is primarily mental. He says that our our vision is nine tenths mental. 
you know, when, when we talk about our vision being uh, primarily mental, you know, that, that seems kind of like a, an unusual statement. But it's very, very common uh, in, in many psychology schools uh, at universities will be familiar with how much our mind affects uh, our perception. Very common uh, psychology experiment that you do in, you know, like a psychology 101 class is that a teacher will have uh, students close their eyes and think about warm bread and butter or some delicious food and getting the students to uh, have their mouths water just from imagining a particular type of food, okay? So that the body responds to what we're thinking about. When people look at letters and the vision is imperfect, the more they're having that experience, the more they're remembering letters imperfect, uh, imperfectly. And so then they actually develop a, an imperfect memory of what letters look like. There's problems with the memory. There's problems with the imagination when the vision is imperfect. This is something that Bates writes about extensively. I, I Just yesterday, I, I was working uh, with a woman by Skype, and I had her looking at a sheet of letters close up that she was holding in hand. She, she was nearsighted, and she's improving her vision for the distance. And, I, and then she had the same identical sheet just a little bit further away out on the table in front of her. And um, as I as I had her look from one sheet to the other so that she was doing shifting, um, I was telling her, remember that the letters out in the distance are just as black, just as sharp, just as crisp as the ones in the sheet close up. And you're using the ones in the sheet close up to refresh your memory. And she said uh, something along the lines of, this is so weird. The letters in the distance are getting better as I imagine that they're clearer which is actually a Bates technique of, of using the imagination. You could use the memory. This is all stuff that he talks about in his book, none of which I understood when I first read the book. Uh, it's not until a person actually experiences that. And that's that's a very specific technique that I used with that woman. It, it um, The person kind of has to be guided through it. And um, I don't use that technique with everybody, but I had a sense that it would work with this particular uh, client of mine. And sure enough, she, she was just smiling as her vision got better and better. And then it's a matter of her practicing that with the letters further and further away. I, I, I taught her how to do that, and I, I told her how to, how to practice that so that um, her vision can continue to get better. Yeah, you're right. This is all very experiential. I had to come in, sit down, and work through three or four exercises with you until it finally I got it. And I said, oh, this is the shift. <laughs> and then that shift is yeah. permanent. Now I know exactly why and what I was doing wrong. And there is nowhere in my life that I was taught to do any different, right? Right. My, my reference to my eyes from my childhood is from Bugs Bunny eating carrots. Yes. So I thought the only way that I could improve my eyesight was to eat carrots, and yeah. that's it. Vitamin A. Yeah. Um, what's the Bates method perspective on nutrition? He did talk about uh, having people uh, exercise, just physical exercise. He would he uh, with older patients of his, he would tell them to get out and walk and then eventually start running as their their health improved. Uh, he would make sure that they were drinking a lot of water. Um, with some people, he would tell them to to remove some some items from their diet, but it was very specific to the individual. It, um, so he, Bates doesn't go into explicit detail about any kind of particular diet that will help the vision because that's not what uh, was working for him with uh, working with people for over 30 years of improving every kind of vision problem. Um, as long as, and I, and I tell people, as long as you're eating a good, healthy diet, you know, you go, you don't go into the frozen food section. You don't go into the the prepackaged food section of your, your grocery store. Go to the, where the fresh fruits and vegetables are, work your way to the back of the store you, where you get the, you, you know, the, the eggs and, and the meats, the chicken, the fish, all of those kind of things that you're eating something closer to what you would find out in nature. Uh, you know, if you lived on a farm and that kind of thing um, before it's processed, before it has a, um, all kinds of additives that your body doesn't do well with, as long as you're eating a good, uh, varied, healthy diet, your body knows how to use all those nutrients and put those nutrients to use to heal all the different kinds of things that come up with the body. Yeah, absolutely. What kind of, improvements do people typically get while working with you in their vision? Everybody that I work with uh, improves their eyesight. A person just comes for one session. Their, their vision is going to improve a, a smaller amount. Um, usually I have people do at least eight sessions so that during eight sessions, they'll definitely see their vision improve. They could 
be lowering their prescription. I've had multiple people completely stop using their glasses within eight sessions and have their vision uh, described by their optometrist as 2020 after they've worn glasses for, for many, many years. That doesn't happen with everybody. It varies from person to person depending on what their life is like, how much they're able to practice, how strong the prescription was, uh, varies on, on, on different factors, but everybody can improve their eyesight and have it get better uh, just from practicing uh, regularly and, and knowing what to practice and knowing what to avoid. So no glasses, no LASIK, no surgery. You could just do all of this naturally. This is fascinating, and I wish more people knew about it. And that's part of the reason we're doing this. Yeah. yeah. That, well, thanks to you. Yeah, you're you're yeah. getting the information out there to people with your podcast. That's a really good thing. Definitely. I'm going to share this with everybody I know. If a listener wants to – actually, before we go there, can you share one of the exercises with our listeners that we did while I was over at your office? Sure. We've been talking about shifting. Shifting is this idea that you you uh, continually look away from the thing that you just looked at, that you don't stop and stare at anything. That varies a lot with a person, how far they have to look away. You know, it could be to the end of a line of letters. It could be off to another object. It could be uh, looking off of your computer, computer screen, looking out the window, that you look away and then you come back to the thing that you were looking at. But even when you come back to your computer screen or to your book, or to you know an eye chart that your attention continues to move over parts of whatever it is that you're looking at. So that's that's shifting. Not everyone's vision improves with shifting. Uh, every Bates technique doesn't help everyone because it's really a matter of using a Bates technique to get the individual to relax. Uh, the one that I prefer to use with most people is palming. So we'll we'll walk your listeners through palming. So. If you, uh, a good way to, to check to see if palming helps you is that you, you get a business card or you get a magazine or a newspaper and you, something that has different size fonts on it. You just kind of find where you see things best without your glasses, without your contact lenses. And if there's something that's smaller that you can't see, of just kind of noticing what things look like, if they're blurred or not, you're just kind of getting your baseline, seeing what things look like. And what you're going to do is you, you put down your, your, your piece of paper, whatever you're using to, to kind of gauge what your vision is like. And you, if you sit at a table or at, a, at, a, at a, a desk, you can put your elbows on the, the desktop and you cover your eyes with the palms of your hands without pressing on your eyeballs and you close your eyes. And then you just rest. Um, so I'd, I'd invite your listeners to go ahead and test that right now, that if they are palming correctly, as soon as they close their eyes and as soon as they start palming, if they're just kind of resting, they'll feel some sense of relief, that their eyes will feel more comfortable. Uh, some people might feel uh, a sensation of tension being relieved around their eyes or in, on their face and their head when they do the palming. I would normally, if I was working with a, a client right now, I'd just be quiet and let them relax. Um, and I'll time them so that they palm for at a minimum of three minutes right off the bat. If they can palm for longer, four or five minutes, that, that's even better, as long as the person is at ease and comfortable. The reason why you put your elbows on the desktop is so that your arms don't get tired. You just kind of rest your face into your into the palms of your hands, and you just relax, you just rest. If thoughts start coming to mind about your to-do list, you know, uh, you know, I gotta send this email to this person, I gotta return that call, I gotta get back to this project, I gotta make sure I pick up the kids from school. If those kind of thoughts start coming to mind, then instead you just kind of clear your mind of those things and you just come back to just resting, that, that during the time when you're palming, you're just taking a break. You're just taking a break for a few minutes and you can steer your mind over to something pleasant and enjoyable, like a nice vacation that you've taken, um, like sitting out in your backyard if you have a garden or taking a hike uh, in a forest, something that is pleasurable for you as an individual, something that puts you at ease. When you do that, you'll also notice that your breathing gets easier. You just kind of calm down. You, you're, you're comfortable. So you do that for the three or four minutes, just kind of resting, letting your mind go between doing nothing, just resting, or thinking about something pleasant and enjoyable. At the end of that, 
you open your eyes, you uncover your eyes, and you take a look at the sheet of paper that you looked at, whether it was a business card or whatever it was. If there's a momentary improvement in your vision, that's just a sign that you relaxed enough so that you notice that your vision improved from the relaxation. Sometimes people say, well, it just went away, that the improvement just went away. Bates has a famous line that, that he writes in many places. If the relaxation is temporary, the improvement is temporary. So practice is a process of learning to have that relaxation turned on more and more and more and more frequently, and especially when you're looking at letters, either close up or in the distance. So I highly recommend that uh, people do, do palming. Uh, it works for, for most people. If any technique, any Bates technique doesn't work for you, it's not a matter of you doing it until it works. When I first uh, was learning uh, my vision improvement, when I was first uh, improving my eyesight, um, I tried palming and it did not work for me because I was trying so hard. I was going to be the best palmer in the world and uh, I was going to fix my vision very, very quickly. And so I was making an extraordinary effort to do palming well. And I, so I wasn't resting. I wasn't relaxing and my vision would get worse. So you can actually use a Bates technique to make a person's vision worse if it's done incorrectly, if the person's not relaxing, if they're not resting. And that's where working with somebody like me comes comes in so handy. It, it definitely is much, much easier when you have a guide, as you experienced over at the office. Yeah, we did both shifting and palming while I was, your, while I was over at your office, and it certainly helped me and made a difference in changing my paradigm and even improved my vision a little bit. Now, if a listener wants to work with you to improve their vision, what will be their experience? Do they need to come in or do you work remotely? I could, um, yeah, people here in the Los Angeles area are welcome to come into the office uh, here in Montebello and, and uh, they could set appointments with me by going onto my website. Um, they, they can contact me on, on my website, centeredvision.com, C E N T E R E D V I S I O N.com. And uh, they could uh, contact me there and um, we can we can either set up an appointment to have them come into the office here in, in Montebello, California, or we can work by Skype. Uh, even people here in the Los Angeles area, because of traffic and everything, a lot of people choose to just work by Skype. And uh, I've been very successful in working with people by, you know, Skype or Zoom. How often will these people see you and what will you do during that time? And is there homework? In general, um, people choose to work with me about uh, meet with me about once a week. The more frequently a person meets with me and, and with greater regularity, the, the more quickly their vision improves. Typically, uh, if they meet with me for, say, the first session, um, I'm testing different Bates techniques with them, and then I teach them which Bates techniques worked for them, and they'll know. They'll have an idea of, oh, my vision got better, and I feel better when I do that particular thing. Then I... I give them an idea of how to practice until our next session. And um, my aim is that they become able over a period of sessions to improve their eyesight on their own. Instead of giving a fish to a person, I'm teaching the person how to fish. I'm teaching them how to improve their own eyesight by teaching them the what to do, what not to do. They have to practice. It, it, um, Bates, that's, that's the difference between glasses and contact lenses. You know, you go to an optometrist or something and you get a pair of glasses and you walk out and you could see nominally well with the glasses. But as we talked about, you know, glasses or contact lenses um, make your vision worse um, over a period of time. You become dependent on them. You'll eventually have to get stronger and stronger prescriptions. With me, we're, we're having the person practice um, daily. You know, I usually tell people, you know, that they want to practice between three and five, six days a week, depending on, on how imperfect their eyesight has been, how long they've been using glasses. Uh, it'll typically, they have to practice longer daily uh, uh, and more frequently. But eventually what you're doing is you're learning how to use your eyes correctly anytime that you have them open, anytime that you're looking at anything, the television, the computer screen, looking out at signs on the freeway, uh, looking at the board in, in the classroom, that you're using your eyes correctly. And what correctly means is that your mind and your eyes are at ease and relaxed. And when you do that, your vision is normal. What do you charge for appointments with you? Yeah, so my, my basic one-hour rate is $125 an hour. 
Uh, very few people end up having to pay that because although I've had a couple of people whose vision improved dramatically so that they're, they didn't need glasses after working with them for less than an hour, that's not the case with most people. Uh, most people, just like if you were going to learn how to drive a car, you need to get into the car regularly and, and, and practice with it. Most people, I encourage them to, to do like an eight pack. So instead of paying $125 for eight one hour sessions, they pay $499 for eight one hour sessions. So it's a substantial discount there from the hourly rate. Um, and that way we work typically for eight weeks getting together. I show them the what to do. They practice on their own. Uh, I refine their techniques as they go by them meeting regularly with me. They, they, they feel the commitment also to practice regularly, you know, Oh, tomorrow I have my appointment with Carlos. So I better practice, you know, that kind of thing. Or, you know, today my vision got better from practicing with Carlos. So I want to keep that practice up to improve my vision. By far the biggest ingredient that people bring to the table is to be able to practice. So I tell people, you know, this is going to be something that you have to include into your existing schedule. If you can whittle out, you know, between 15 minutes, half an hour to an hour daily of, of practice, uh, three, five, six days a week, the, the more you practice, the more quickly you'll, your vision will get better and better and better um, so that you, you get to the point where you're not using the glasses or the contacts at all. Yeah. Or even if you've had problems with LASIK, that those problems go away. This is a question I ask every guest. What are your top three anti-aging hacks or tips? Relax. Take time off from life. <laughs> Everybody's working really hard. Uh, all of us have uh, making a living, dealing with family. You know, we enjoy our families. We enjoy our hobbies. We enjoy um, a life. But you have to be attentive to taking care of yourself. So take time off and do that in a way that gives you relief, not only, you know, for a two week vacation a year, but that you're taking time off regularly on your weekends, that daily, um, when you go to eat, pause, don't eat while you're working, slow down your life, give yourself time for your, your to get out of sympathetic response, to get out of fight or flight. Even if you're eating the best food in the world, if you can't digest it, which you don't, uh, digest it properly when you're in sympathetic response and fight or flight. It's it's better to take some time to give yourself time daily um, to rest. And and when you do that, you're able to digest food. You're you're better with your family. You're better with yourself. You're better with your friends, your coworkers. Um, when you give yourself a breath and you just kind of step back, and then you learn to live your life from that place. That's that's easily the, the, the most valuable thing that I've learned from from base techniques and from other stuff that I've learned that's uh, complementary to Bates. Okay. Carlos, this has been a great conversation. I will put all of your information on the show notes of this episode, as well as some of the topics that we discussed. Thank you so much for coming on the show today. I'm very glad to be here with you today. You can find all the information we discussed in this episode and links to studies in the show notes at antiaginghacks.net. To make sure you get notified of new episodes, please subscribe to the podcast. You can also follow us on Instagram at antiaginghacks and on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash antiaginghacks. And now for the disclaimers. This podcast is for general information purposes only and does not constitute medical advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. Please seek the advice of your health professional for any health or medical conditions.